<laughs> okay, 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 okay. Now you can hear me, right? <laughs> it's never a coding train without, I know. I just gotta wait till the chat, I gotta wait till the chat catches up and realizes that I am talking that you can hear me now. <sighs> Still talking to himself, no joke, okay. Oh, I just gotta wait for this. All right. Um, <clears throat> All right. Let's 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 begin again. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Welcome. My name is Dan, and this is the Coding Train. Oh, I said so many interesting and important and funny and lucid, illuminating and exciting and magnificent things that I cannot possibly remember. It's not a coding train if I don't start with my mic muted by accident every once in a while. Anyway, so why am I here? What's going on? It's Monday. I'm wearing a t-shirt. This couldn't possibly be the coding train. It's like cold outside. I'm wearing the t-shirt. See, I had a whole thing. Ah! <laughs> Good morning and welcome to a very special edition of The Coding Train on a Monday. So it's been a while since I've been here. I haven't done a live stream for several weeks now. I was at this wonderful event that was really fun and exciting called ThinkerCon, I'm wearing the ThinkerCon t-shirt. Um, and so I was not able to live stream on that Friday. And then this past Friday, it was a, a holiday here in the United States, otherwise known as uh, a Thanksgiving. So I was not able to uh, live stream on Friday. And I just, I can't, I can't stay away. I have to come back to you. I just, I felt the, the, the sort of need to put some ideas to typing onto screen to internet. So welcome. So I'm here. Um, this, by the way, um, is actually live. Uh, I noticed there was some confusion at the beginning of the chat. People were asking, is this a premiere or is this live? What a world we live in. It's so confusing. <laughs> there, you can have something recorded that is premiered live that you can chat with or you could actually be live or I could be live, but I'm actually 30 seconds in the past by the time you see it. And then you could be watching this at some point in the future and record it. There's so many possibilities, that's so confusing. But right now, at this very moment, I am live here and I am going to program some stuff. Um, so, uh, I'm checking out the chat. Uh, so I'm not gonna be here for super long. I will go back to my usual uh, Friday schedule. Um, I, I do, I am here though to talk about a few things. Uh, for at least an hour. Uh, let me open up a web browser. And um, let me first go to something which I'm very excited about. So you might have re recently remember that I did a challenge, a coding challenge, where I attempted to create a logo interpreter. Logo being the programming language invented in 1967, where you can control this little turtle that moves around the screen and make graphics. And I did my cruddy little version of it that I thought was my best attempt on my channel. And then you, the people, created something unbelievable. So I'm gonna go to github.com slash coding train slash uh, logo. So this is the, uh, I don't know why I'm not signed in, but that's fine. This is the community uh, version. I'm gonna go here to contributors. Um, all of these people have contributed code to this version of the logo project. And if I uh, go here and click on uh, this live web demo link, I will be here and you will see, look at this. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Okay. There's like a design. There's, look at it. There's actual syntax highlighting. There's a little menu here where I can like pick. 
Look, and it supports color in hexadecimal with repeat and syntax highlighting. And I can look at these different, um, and I can look at these different things that are um, here, and I could type my own. Look at this, the coding train logo is here. This is unbelievable. I don't know what this, this button does. Recenter. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I can like move it around. <laughs> that's nuts. Uh, this is just unbelievable. I, um, whoa, look at that. Oh, that was like an animation. <laughs> I mean, how do you people know how to do all this stuff? It's unbelievable to me. So thank you, everyone. I'm really excited about the future possibilities of what we can do in this channel um, um, using this. So, so I will try to do this periodically where a particular coding challenge is put into a separate repository that people can contribute to. Um, I do have difficulty managing all of this stuff, <laughs> and I'm figuring out new and interesting ways of doing that. For example, and sometimes someone just emerges, uh, the Tasteful Toasty on GitHub is now the, uh, has permissions to this repository to review and merge pull requests. Um, so that's really exciting. I do also want to mention then, though, that if you go to thecodingtrain.com, uh, and uh, these are the two, these are the two part coding challenges that for any of these challenges you can also uh, submit, I don't know, you can also, so in addition to contributing to maybe a community version, if you've made your own version that's hosted somewhere on your own, you can uh, submit that as well. So I don't know, yeah, and you can see, look at this. Here, I think I showed these already, but there is a 3D logo experiment. Uh, that was submitted here, which actually, look at this, this is amazing, that uh, submitted by DaveBsoft.com, which uh, implements a version of Logo where you can uh, run, it, run it with a 3D renderer. Oh my goodness. So, so much amazing stuff. Okay, um, so I wanted to mention that. Um, what else is coming, coming? So I am going to, uh, it is almost December, and I am planning to do a holiday extravaganza. <laughs> By planning mean I have no plan yet. Uh, and that will be a fundraiser for the Processing Foundation. So I just want to mention that you don't need to wait for the fundraiser. Uh, Processing Foundation is a um, non-for-profit uh, foundation in the United States uh, that uh, supports a variety of initiatives. You can see all the information here on the website. Um, and if you go here to support, you can find a way to support. So I will do a fundraiser at some point for processing. I think tomorrow is Giving Tuesday, so pre-Giving Tuesday announcement. Uh, there you go. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is the Chaos Game. Uh, okay, let's move this. So many possibilities here. Ooh, I like this. Ooh, we can make this one. Look at this. Ooh, boy, boy, boy. So many. Oh, whoa, whoa. I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> um, so the reason why I'm doing this is at the FingerCon. Let me let me thank a few people. Let me open up uh, FingerCon here. Um, so uh, I want to thank, uh, in particular, the organizers of ThinkerCon, uh, Smarter Every Day, uh, Destin. If, uh, if you're not familiar with the Smarter Every Day channel, you probably uh, would enjoy it. Um, Sabrina, uh, Emily, and uh, Henry from Minute Physics. I don't know why I don't see Henry here. And Robert Colrich from Radiolab were the organizers of this conference. It was really fun. Um, I got to see the Festival of the Spoken Nerd, which was mind-blowingly awesome. I mean, I'm like, I am the target audience for that show. Uh, it was really fun. Um, and I was uh, lucky enough to get to do a short 10-minute demo. Um, I did this demo with um, uh, James Schloss. Let's see, uh, author of the, um, I think it's the Algorithm Archive. I think that's the name of his project. Um, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure this is his project. Uh, he has a project like this. It's got to be the Algorithm Archive, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, and his YouTube channel is LeeIOSOS. Um, and I've, men I've, I've mentioned his channel before because I used his video on the Hypercube to create my Hypercube challenge. He also has a Twitch channel where he does a lot of live streaming. So, um, uh, so I'm going to mention these things. 
um, uh, algorithm archive, thinkercon. Um, so we did a kind of coding competition. We had 15 minutes and we each programmed the chaos game next to each other. He was using like Julia and some kind of crazy VI or something as his text editor and I was just using my usual P5 JS web editor, which I am also going to use right now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, let me just do this. Um, okay. And, um, and I'm going to call this uh, Chaos Game. Uh, chaos Game Number File. There is also a, a number file video, uh, video which I will reference. Um, okay. All right, so this is what I'm going to do today. <clears throat> um, so Johnny Joestar asks, um, is this not supposed to go on Twitch too? No, so I do not live stream to Twitch. At one point I was live streaming to, to multiple platforms and I, for, for better or worse, I have sort of landed on YouTube as my primary platform for both live streaming and shorter edited versions of things that happen on the live stream. So let's just get started here playing the chaos game. Oh, 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 before I forget, how do I find this? Okay, a oh, Dr. Circuit. I think twitter.com Dr. Circuit. Dr. Circuit, uh, SB, uh, Espen Sande Larson, is a coding train viewer, musician, programmer uh, from Norway, uh, has his own YouTube channel that you could find, uh, created for me the most amazing piece of music ever that I will premiere at this moment. Okay, thank you, um, Espen, for this amazing tune. I don't know how quiet, if that was loud, super loud or super quiet, um, but I, I definitely plan on using that often. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see, chaos game. Coding challenge. This is, I think, gonna be finally, I'm gonna do this in two parts. Because I'm going to do a really simple version with just a triangle first, and then I'm going to do another version uh, with um, uh, 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 more of a variety. Okay. I'm looking for my train whistle. Ah, here it is. <laughs> All right. Let me reset the... I almost want to have a timer here, but nothing ever, nothing good ever comes from the timer. Okay, the volume was pretty good, I wouldn't change it, okay. All right. <laughs> Hello, welcome to a co- <laughs> That's no good, that's no good, that's no good. Ah! <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Me, 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 my. All right. <laughs> Hello, welcome to a coding challenge. <laughs> coding challenge. Last, last try, last try, everybody. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge, the chaos game. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, so why am I doing this coding challenge? I recently was lucky enough to attend this amazing event, uh, ThinkerCon in Huntsville, Alabama. Thank you to Smarter Every Day and the other organizers of uh, ThinkerCon. This was a mind-blowing event. And at this event, I 
was I had the chance to do a live demo of some coding in front of people underneath a rocket. It was nuts. It was a Saturn rocket looked kind of like this. Um, and I did this with uh, James Schloss, who is the author of the Algorithm Archive, um, has a YouTube channel as well. You might remember uh, references to his YouTube channel in the... <clears throat> I, I should have his YouTube channel up. Lee iOS OS? No. Uh, what is a hypercube? Uh, come on. Seriously? Seriously? What happened to, his was always the first one. Look, here's mine. The Groupon app is a oh, how come I don't have my YouTube premium on? I need to sign in. Uh, I think this is, oh boy, oh boy. If you write this, don't I have YouTube Premium? <laughs> okay. Uh, everybody, just take a moment. Here we go. And here we go. There we go. Learning is something I've always enjoyed. Okay. okay. Hold on a sec. I want to thank the right people here. Don't worry. This is this is all going to happen in a moment. Um, but if I have a little, okay. So uh, Dustin, uh, Dustin, smarter uh, every day. Uh, Sandlin, Dustin Sandlin, Henry, uh, Henry Minute Physics. I gotta get everybody's name that I wanna thank. Henry Reich. Uh, uh, Emily Grassley, Emily Grassley. Uh, Sabrina Cruz, Robert Krollwich. Uh, okay, yes, I'm using an invisible computer. Isn't that amazing? Uh, this is my, my script over here. I have a script. Okay. Um, and how can I, hold on. I'm just gonna add, let me, let me do this. You had, You've got to realize that half the time on the Coding Train Live is just me taking care of stuff that I need to take care of. So I'm over here, and um, let's see, I have YouTube. Where do I find my YouTube premium that I'm logged in over here? And then I have like family sharing. So family, premium family. So I have this, manage. So, um, uh, how do I, yeah, family sharing settings, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can share with up to six members. So I just need to share, look, so I need to delete, add a family member. So my family member now, I have a new family member, it's codingtrain.choochoo. <laughs> codingtrain.choochoo at gmail.com. And send, join my family now. I have no idea what's gonna happen here, so I'm, whoops. I am going to, um, now I'm going to, uh, 
Um, just, oh, I'm gonna do this for a second. I forgot I have a keyboard shortcut for this. Ah, there we go. Um, I am going to go into the email. I don't, I just wanna, I don't know what's in the email of that account. I've never logged into it. You're invited to join a Google family group. Accept invitation. Get started. Join family. Oh, I'm joining my family. Welcome to the family. Oops. Ah. Welcome to the family, everybody. Uh, so now, if I go here and hit refresh, Learning there is we something go. I've always enjoyed. All right, no more ads, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, now, remember how I was about to do a coding challenge? It's like 10.50. I don't have any water. Okay, here we go, everyone. Back to Slack channel, chat. Yes, okay, oh, where's my, all right. Okay, here we go. Actually, maybe what I should do is um, no. Sorry, everybody. Here. Hold on. This is the actual code from ThinkerCon which might make sense for me to start with this. Let me just get rid of some. Um, and of course I made some silly error. Counters not defined. All right. Okay. James Schloss, and what is the name? Leos, Leiosos, Leiosos. Okay. All right. Here we go. A little jogging, a little exercise. Here we go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, the chaos game. Okay, this is exactly what I'm going to make in this coding challenge. Thank you, Prasanth Kumar, for the super chat. Ah! <laughs> No more super chats, please. It interrupts me. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a coding challenge, the chaos game. This is exactly what I'm going to make in this coding challenge. Why am I going to make it? So recently I was very lucky to attend this amazing event called ThinkerCon. I'm wearing my t-shirt from ThinkerCon. Um, thank you to the organizers of ThinkerCon, Destin Sandlin from Smarter Every Day and Henry Reich and Emily Grassley and Sabrina Cruz and Robert Kulrich. This event was mind-blowingly awesome and amazing. I met so many wonderful people. Um, links to ThinkerCon and, and various other YouTube channels related in the, uh, this video's description. So while I was there, I met for the first time in person uh, James Schloss, who is the author of the Algorithm Archive, a wonderful website with many sorts of algorithms in it. Read more about it. Also uh, from the YouTube channel that I have no idea how to pronounce still, but Leiosos. Um, and I've used a lot of his videos before as inspiration and ideas. Okay, so James and I did a live coding demo in person at ThinkerCon creating this, the chaos game. So what is the chaos game? Well, the chaos game, the chaos game, I have to explain what it is now. That was, that was, that was pretty good. 
That was pretty good. Chaos game, pretty good. Originally, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Did I have the number file video? Oh yeah. The chaos game is a, a I wasn't going to cry. There's no crying in coding. All right. <laughs> the chaos game refers to a method of picking random points and iteratively moving point, the previous point you picked to the next point and off. I, you know what, there's not really a good way for me to explain it to you other than diagramming it and actually just writing the code for it. For more background on the chaos game, I certainly would suggest um, this particular uh, video from uh, number file. So what, what, what's amazing to me about the chaos game is it's, uh, there's, a very, there's a very, very simple idea. So the way we're going to play the chaos game is we are going to have a two-dimensional space that two-dimensional space is going to start with a set of seed points. Now, I'm going to, for the moment, just create three sort of fixed seed points in the form of a triangle. Of course, any three points are basically going to make a triangle, unless they're all on one line, but that's another topic for another day. And then what I'm going to do is I am just going to pick a random point anywhere. <laughs> oh, that was such a fail. <laughs> Third try is the charm. Third charm's the third. Ah. Ah, yes. Okay, I got a random point. And now I'm gonna start with this random point. Then, if I were somebody who didn't code, what I would then do, I'm really, I, 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 I'm having trouble. This is the problem when I don't live stream often enough. I have a lot of trouble. Um, I'm just going to start, I, I, what I, I want to do this with no edits whatsoever. So you, the viewing audience, is just going to have to bear with me. I promise that I am not going to stop again. Just needed a little warm up, just needed to kind of get myself going for the day. And now, here we go. <laughs> this will all be over soon, in more ways than one. <laughs> Hello, welcome to a coding challenge, the chaos game. So this is the chaos game playing out right behind me. Um, this is actually code that I wrote at this wonderful event that I recently got the chance to attend. Um, called ThinkerCon. <laughs> Thank you to the organizers of ThinkerCon, Destin Sandlin, Henry Reich, Emily Grassley, Sabrina Cruz, and Robert Krowich. Links to their information and websites in this video description. This was like a mind-blowingly awesome event. Um, and while I was there, I programmed in front of people underneath a rocket, a Saturn rocket depicted here, um, with um, James Schloss. Now, I never met James Schloss uh, in person before, but you might remember that I've uh, used uh, James Schloss is a YouTube channel um, as inspiration for um, other uh, videos like the Tesseract over here. So um, James and I, I think he used like Julia and like VI, but I programmed this chaos game algorithm in the P5 web editor. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now in homage to the wonderful time I had at ThinkerCon. So what is the chaos game? So first of all, I would recommend this number file video about the chaos game for background. Um, it's, an iter it's an iterative process of picking random points and, um, and doing some math with those points and seeing what happens afterwards. So rather than try to define it, you can of course always read the Wikipedia page, very tempted to do a dramatic reading of it. I'm just going to describe to you how it works over here on the whiteboard. So let's say we have a two-dimensional plane. This is a two-dimensional plane. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a set of seed points. 
So, and maybe I'm going to put those points in a, as an equilateral triangle. But as you'll see, eventually at some point, I could have four C points, five C points. I could put them anywhere. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the chaos game. And the first thing I'm going to do is pick a random point on the wall. Here we go. Woohoo! <laughs> that worked the first try. Earlier, to, earlier I was doing another take and I had to do that like six times. <laughs> I'm very lucky now. Okay, so, <clears throat> so this is my first random point. Now what I'm going to do is I need to pick a random number, one, two, or three. A, B, or C. Zero, one, or two. Uh, how do I do that? Do I have a, um, I don't know, I'll just pick one from my, my oh, I have a book of random numbers. <laughs> five, four, one, five, seven. So why don't we do seven modulus three, right? Seven divided by three is two, remainder one. So I picked a one, zero, one, two. So if this was zero, this was one, this was two. What I'm going to do now is move halfway to this point. And now I have another point. Aha, okay. Now, pick another, another random number. Nine, eight, eight, one, eight. So I'll just use the last digit, eight. Modulus three is, uh, uh, eight divided by three is two, remainder two. So zero, one, two. So now I'm going to go halfway to this point. And I could keep doing this over and over again. And if you watch the number file video, you'll see somebody do this actually physically with rulers and pens and all sorts of artistic talent. I have none of those things. So, but I do know a little bit about programming. And so this is something I can program. So let's actually go program this and then see what happens. All right, so I'm going to use the P5JS web editor. This is, I think, a simple enough project. Um, I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm just going to go to the uh, editor homepage here, um, and I'm going to uh, name this uh, Chaos Game 1 uh, Save. All right, so let's uh, start this off. So I've got my two-dimensional canvas. What I need first are those seed points. So I'm going to do this um, in a very simple way, and then... All right, thank you, by the way, to Espen Larson, Dr. Circuit on Twitter, uh, who created the I'll Refactor This Later song, which is like my new favorite thing in the whole world. Uh, links to more about um, Espen's music in this video's description. Uh, okay, so I'm creating these three points. Uh, you, know, you, know, you know what? I'm going to put them in a random spot. I'm going to make the seed points themselves actually random. Why not, right? So I'm going to have a, a point A, a point B, uh, and a point C. So I need three points, A, X, A. Am I standing in front of the code? I kind of am. So let me move this over and let me move this over. Let me give myself, let me just use a window width and window height. So I cover the whole thing and then I'm gonna make it a, a black background. Let me move this a little bit over. Oh, I think we're good. All right, so what I wanna do now is let me draw those points. So I'm gonna say stroke 255, stroke weight eight. So I just wanna see those points AX, I just wanna see them. So um, we should see uh, three points now. How come I don't see any points? Ah, because I am drawing the background over and over in draw. So let's do this here. Okay, so every time I run this sketch, I am going to now have three new points. All right, so now let's play the chaos game. So what I am, then I need a kind of global XY. I need a global XY, and what I'm gonna do with that is I'm also going to have XY be some other random point. And what I'm going to do in draw is say stroke, uh, let's make it uh, like a nice, RGB color, uh, and I'm going to draw a point at XY, and we can see, okay, there it is. So this is 
Right? Every time I run this, I have my three seed points and I have this new pink dot, which is the XY. So now what do I need to do? What I need to do is I need to say, let me pick one of those three points and move halfway there. So the first thing I need to do here is just pick a random number. One, two, or three, right? But this is going to give me a floating point number. So what I want to say now actually is give me floor that, which will take off the decimal place. And then if I get a zero, I'm going to do one thing. Otherwise, if I get a one, I'm going to do another thing. And, and I know, I know there's all, but just remember, <laughs> I know I'm overusing the sound effect right now, but it's the first day I have to use it. And it's just, it makes me so happy. Um, so if I pick zero, what I want to do is move halfway. I want to move halfway, right, to this point. Guess what? I could use some math, right? I could take the x of this, the x of this, divided by two, I've got a new x. But there is actually a function in P5 called LERP. LERP stands for linear interpolation, meaning interpolate from one number to the other in a linear fashion by some amount. So if I want to linearly, I don't know if that's a way to say that. If I want to linear interpolate, if I want to lerp from this point to this point by 0.5, watch what I get to do. 50%, that's halfway there. So I'm going to say x equals lerp x ax 0.5. And I'm going to do the same thing for y. And then I'm going to do uh, here, I'm going to do it with bx. Look, it's already happening. The chaos game is already happening over here. Look, now I only have two points, so you can see all the points end up just on that one line, right? Every time I restart this, all the points end up going between point A, point zero and one. But now let's make some magic happen. Whoops. Ah, let's do the last possibility. Let's plug in the C and see what happens. Okay, here we go. What's going on? Do I see some pattern emerging here? Well, I am playing the chaos game. This looks like it could be kind of familiar. Let's be a little bit more methodical about this. Let me actually start with um, um, an equal, a perfect equilateral triangle. I don't know what I mean by perfect, but um, then what I'm going to do, what do I need to do? An equilateral triangle, boy, this is um, an equilateral triangle. Uh, has an angle of 60 degrees. So if I want to figure out from this top point how far down and how far over to go, I just need to use the angle 60 degrees and cosine and sine. <laughs> I've probably got some video where I explain that, right? Um, so I need to go, you know what I should just do? Forget the equal. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't going to do any edits. I feel like the equilateral triangle is uh, a, a bit of a digression that I don't need to have in this uh, video. Oh, that's a nice one. Um, so let's, let me go back. So actually, this won't be an equilateral triangle, but it'll be simpler. Let me just um, put these seed points at the corners. Um, and then I, so, uh, so I'm going to put these seed points at the corners. And then we're going to see what happens. And then let's, so we can start to see something emerging here, this pattern that's emerging. It's happening kind of slowly. So what I might like to do, a couple things I might like to do. First of all, I think it's, I'm going to make the points a little less thick. Then I'm also going to give them a little bit of alpha. Again, I have no artistic talent, so I shouldn't do what I'm doing. And then I'm going to draw 100 of them each time through draw. There we go. Oh, I, that, I, there we go. Oh, look what's happening. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so beautiful. Let's forget about the alpha, all right? Oh, and you know what we could do, which is fun? Why not? What happens if I give it different colors? Like here, if I pick zero, let's try this one color. If I pick one, let's try a different color, and we can sort of, and we can see now. Ooh. 
we can see there are actually three different sections in a way of this, what is it called? Say it with me, Sierpinski triangle. So this is what's amazing. The chaos game, this very simple algorithm will produce a perfect rendering of a fractal pattern. This one very famously is known as the Sierpinski triangle. Very little code, I've got the Sierpinski triangle right there. So this coding challenge is actually complete, but it's not over. I mean, the video is gonna end at some point when I stop rambling. But let's think about some things that we could do. For example, anytime you make something like this, you might think to yourself, well, what are some parameters that I could start tweaking? Well, why should I bother? Why should I start with only three seed points? Why should I only have, to, why should I only go 50% of the way e um, each time there? Why should I have an equal probability of going to each one? Aren't there some other things we could apply to this? So this is now your exercise. Create your own version of this. Could you make an array of seed points? Could you vary the distance, the, the, the percentage di distance you go to each point? Could you vary the probabilities of how you pick each point? What else could you do with color? How could you render this? Could you connect the lines? Could you use different shapes? <gasps> what if you did this without, uh, and you had to erase the background so you're actually like, piling up all the points in this big array. There's so many possibilities. I'm gonna come back in a second part and at least do the part, I'm gonna refactor this later, but not too much later, where I'm gonna at least make this an array of seed points and, uh, and play around with that 50% uh, value. So I'm gonna do that much. Don't watch that video yet if it exists. If it doesn't exist, you can't watch it. Um, try this on your own and then um, share with me your results and then you'll see my extra little step with this and um, that'll be that, okay? Oh, oh, if you're looking for the code, by the way, when, especially when I do something um, in the P5 web editor, you can just go to this uh, particular uh, URL, which will also be in the video's description, and I do have a, a page about this challenge also on thecodingtrain.com. Okay, thanks, and see you next time. All right. Okay. All right, so that was number one. I'm just gonna move right on. Uh, Dr. Circuit. All right. All right, so let me do a duplicate. Ooh, I like this. That's crazy. Um, okay. All right. Hello and welcome to Coding Challenge, the chaos game. Pop do electric boogaloo. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, thank you to um, Espin Larson, Dr. Circuit on Twitter for creating the I Will Refactor This Later song. This coding challenge is in honor of that song because guess what? Later is now. I will refactor this now. So what I'm gonna do in this coding challenge is expand this idea of the chaos game. Um, instead of merely creating the Sierpinski triangle, I'm going to make a version of this where there could be more than three points, uh, seed points, and that as the points move, as the newly random point move moves from point to point to point, <laughs> um, uh, I, I might move by a different percentage than 50%. So, if you didn't watch the previous coding challenge where I made this, you could pause now and go watch that, or you could just stay here with me right now. Let's be together, let's be friends on the internet, programming stuff. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna to do to refactor this, I really wanna play the song again, but I'm not gonna overdo it. I'm gonna use it sparingly, otherwise people will get irritated and annoyed, and I'm sure I will hear about it. Um, the first thing that I wanna do is I am going to make an array 
called seed. Maybe I should call it seed points. Let's just call it points. I don't know. Let's call it points. Um, and instead of having AX, AY, what I'm going to do in this array, let's get rid of this. First, I just want to recreate this exactly. I am going to uh, say I'm going to have three points and uh, I'm going to create a new point, which is a vector. I'm going to use vec the create vector function to make a new point anywhere randomly in the canvas. I know I've run a little bit out of space here, but that's fine. Um, come on, a little bit further over. Ah, oh, there's my semicolon. Um, and then I'm going to say points push v. Okay, and then I am going to have a point called current which is also going to be uh, a vector, a random vector. And I'm gonna, there we go. There we go. So now what I can do is, again, I have just refactored this to instead of having separate x, y variables for all four points, I have an array that keeps my three seed points, and I have my current point in, and all, all current point is a separate variable, and both of those are P5 vectors. A vector being an object that can hold an X, a Y, and a Z. But I'm not going to use a Z right now, although you could do this in 3D. Oh, you should. You should do this in 3D. <laughs> but I'm not going to. All right, so then I'm going to say uh, for a let P of points, and I'm going to say uh, point P dot X, p dot y. So we should see, there we go. Those are my first three c points. And then what I'm going to do here is random uh, the length. And this is actually now, oh, you know what? I don't even need to do this. Guess what? The random function in p5, I'm going to say like next equal, the random function in p5, will give me a random object out of that array. Now, if I want to pick them with a different probability, I'd have to do something different. But here, this next is now going to be one of those three points randomly. And then all I need to do is say stroke. I'm going to still give it this color. Um, and then I'm going to say uh, uh, next.x equals a lerp this. So I'm lerping, but I'm going to lerp between next and, uh, and the current. Oh, and current is the result of that. So the current is the thing that's moving, and it really doesn't matter, but I like to think of it in this order. Current is moving. And there, I think there's a, actually lerp vector function, so I could do this in one line of code. That's another refactor this later. No. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so there we go. And... Uh, then all I need to do is draw the point. Let's give, uh, all I need to do is draw that point. And here we go. Look at this. Ta-da! Now, one thing I should probably do is also uh, reset it. Um, let's write up, let's actually, all of this stuff here um, is kind of the process of Let's write a function of resetting. Like I want right now, it's like resetting every time I change the code because the P5 editor is configured to like relaunch the sketch. But I think what I would prefer to do here is write my own function called reset. This is a nice refactoring, <laughs> and uh, I need to empty the array, and I'm going to say points equals here. So this function reset will just sort of reseed the environments. And I could do something, I could do it whenever I click the mouse, but just for right now, I could say if frame count modulus like 100 equals zero, then uh, reset. So what that's gonna do is every 100 frames, right? Because a modulus of the number 100 will equal zero anytime the frame count is divisible by 100 with a remainder of zero. So you can see, um, over and over again, this is going to, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I have refactored this, but now that I have refactored this, there are so many possibilities. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. So for example, I can just do this. No. Oh yeah. Look <laughs> now, interestingly enough, I don't really get a pattern that's super interesting to look at with four points kind of accidentally. I sometimes am. Um, and so what happens if I have eight points? 
Whoa, this is crazy. Now, probably what I would want to do, what might make sense for me to do, is place these points around a circle. Just, I mean, it's interesting to have them randomly, but I think I would prefer, just in sort of figuring out what I want to do with this, to have all those points around a circle, right? So you can think about it, actually, this was a way of getting my equilateral triangle that I was looking for. So what if I have eight points, uh, and then I get some kind of like hexagon, octagon, septagon, whatever the number of sides is based on the number of points. For three points, it's a triangle. So you can, you can sort of do the math there of what's going to be if I increase the number of points. So let's actually not reset them randomly, um, but let's reset them. And, and in that sense, I don't need to, this can actually just be in setup. I'm going to always keep these same seed points. Um, and what I'm going to do is say, I'm going to have an angle, which is going to equal 2 pi divided by 8. So let's make a, uh, I'm going to use const for a constant, just to be, have fun. I'm going to call that n. Oh, oh, I didn't, did I not switch back? Uh. All right, don't worry, everybody. I have figured it out. Camera, 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 I know. So hold on. I'm going to go back. All right. Um, all right. Here we go. All right. All right, so what I'm going to do here actually is uh, I'm going to have a fixed set of points, right? So the points are, I'm just going to do once in setup. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the constant. Const n equals 8. And I know I could be using const in other places of the code. And if you want to know more about const, I made a video about it where I got a bunch of things wrong that you can watch. So you might find a different resource for that. Um, but so I just, now I'm making n points. And what I'm going to do is say the angle is 2 pi divided by i. That's a bad idea because I don't want to divide by 0. Um, so, uh, all right, we'll, we'll say, um, oh, it's, I know what it is. It's i times 2 pi divided by n. That's what it is, right? Because I want to have, I'm looking for, and if, uh, look, if, if n is 4, for example, I want 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees. It's probably going to go the other way because the screen is flipped, but that's the idea. So now what I'm going to do is say create vector at... Um, uh, some number, like let's just do 200 times cosine of the angle. Oh, you know what? I think there's p5 vector from, p5 dot vector from angle, I think is a function. Angle. So it's going to make a vector from that angle. And then I can say v dot, um, uh, v, uh, v dot uh, multiply 100. And that's working, but I need to uh, translate to width divided by 2, height divided by 2. And now we have these points in the center. Of course, I also, if I want to, I need to do that here. Okay, so there we go. We can see now I've created eight points around, and let's actually use, um, let's make that a little, ooh, why is this down here? Oh, oh, there's a weird mistake, goofy mistake happening. Ugh. Oh, because when I reset, urgh. this is this is kind of, you know what I'm going to do? The translate is fine, but it's bothering me. I'm just going to make life easier on myself and say add width divided by 2, height divided by 2, right? I'm just going to move that to the center manually by adding that to the vector. Okay. Now what I want to do is multiply it by like width divided by 2 or something. Okay, great. <laughs> so now you see those are all my points. We're still playing the chaos game. Now what I want to do is I am going to have a variable called percent. And I also, I just want to make like a lot more points really quickly so I can just sort of see the pattern. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I am going to try, I'm going to, when I lerp, I'm going to lerp by that percent. And let's try uh, different values. 
So let's try, so let's go back to 0.5, and this is what I get. Let's try 0.25. Interesting. Let's try 0.1. <laughs> let's try an n of 4. 0.25. Six? Do I need like, let me get something more interesting. I could have sworn when I thought about this earlier I'd get more interesting patterns. Time out for a second. Um, all right, let me think about this. I could have sworn when I was looking at this page here. Side of pentagon. Oh, but the current cannot be the same. Let's try pentagon. There, oh, I just should have picked five. All right, I'm back. Um, Nico Monsoon in the chat said, try three just to see if you didn't break anything. So I made the point n equals, I made n equal three with a percentage of 0.5, and we can see I have the Sierpinski triangle. Um, actually, if you look on the Wikipedia page for Chaos Game, you'll start to see a bunch of these. A point inside a square repeatedly jumps half the distance towards a randomly chosen vertex, but the currently chosen vertex cannot be two places away from the previously cho chosen vertex. So this is interesting, right? So I could actually start to create some of these patterns by modifying how I pick a particular point. So this one actually would be nice. Let's do the pentagon one. A point inside a pentagon repeatedly jumps half of the distance, but the current chosen vertex cannot be the same. This is gonna be an easy one for us to implement. We just need to get a new random number that's not the same as the previous one. So, um, so let's go back here. Let's first make this five. Okay, so we can see even with five, a pentagon, we're kind of getting a somewhat of an interesting uh, pattern here. And I might, I don't know why I obsess over this sort of stuff, but I kind of feel like, um, let's give this just like a little bit of alpha and make the stroke weight a one and do like a thousand points. All right, so we can just sort of see this pattern more quickly. <clears throat> okay, now. What was I doing? Ah, so what I want to do now is not allow the next point to be the same as what was previously chosen. And so there's a variety of ways I could do this, but actually I could just create a way of, um, I could just create a way of ignoring it if it happens to be the same one. So let's say um, previous, I'm going to create a variable called previous, and right here when I pick previous, equals next, and I'm going to say as long as next is not equal to previous, then I can do this stuff. So now look at this. There we go. The chaos game pentagon with one slight modification. And you know what? I, I don't want it to keep resetting. I just want it to, um, I want to tell it not to reset. And I want to go to share, full screen, and I'm going to put this in a different window, and we're going to bring this up here, and we're just going to enjoy this now. Okay. Here we go. We're done. Ah, chaos game. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, look at this. It's so beautiful and intricate and amazing. Um, so I now encourage you, now you've really got something, right? You can start to make a variety of patterns. And, and really, here's the thing. One thing that you could do that actually is, is really you could think about that I didn't do. If we go up here, look at this. 
This is actually a little uh, sort of animated GIF showing you the process of actually moving the points from one spot to another and then sort of branching out. So imagine what you could do if instead of just picking all the points and layering them, you actually created a system where you animate the process of building this pattern. Um, and you can see, uh, you can see maybe you can recreate some of these other patterns by doing this rules. Um, this one would be a nice one to create. Um, you could try different percentages. Um, and see what you make. So thank you for uh, uh, watching this second part of the chaos game. I think we are done with all the chaos game stuff I'm gonna do. If you make your own version of this, please visit the codingtrain.com link that's in this video's description. There, there are instructions for how to submit a link to the version of the chaos game that you made yourself. Um, you can share with me your images or GIFs on Twitter at Shiftman or at the coding train, um, hashtag coding chaos game. <laughs> And I'll see you in a future coding challenge, all right? Um, I don't know, maybe I will. All right, everyone. I think we got a couple coding challenges out of that. I got my equilateral triangle in the end, at least. Yes, I did. I'm just curious here. I sort of thought varying the percentage would be interesting, but apparently not so much. Ooh, that's kind of cool. So I guess it is. Maybe the idea was, oh, going the whole, th going further is what I should have done, right? Right? It's all about going further. Oh. 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 Okay, hold on. I got to come back. We got to include this. Uh. I, don't, I need a record scratch sound effect. <laughs> record scratch. <laughs> I guess this could be done in post. <laughs> That's just not going to want to add it. I mean, with, for good reason, I don't think we should do a record scratch. Wait, 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 wait. Let's refactor this now. And actually, I'm not actually going to refactor it. I, I realized something. When I was playing with the percentage earlier and making it lower, I started to get much noisier images. And of course this is true because I'm not going very far. And so the points are sort of layering on top of each other and I'm just getting kind of a cloud of points. But what if instead of going halfway there, and um, let's actually, I, don't, I know I'm being kind of a lunatic about this stuff, but let me just make these white. Um, instead of going halfway there, what if I go 75% the way there. So actually going further will start to yield some interesting patterns. And you can see here now if I say 15, look at this. So this is now 15 points going 75% of the way there. You know, and by the way, maybe if I were to make, oh, and that's 90% of the way there. If I were to make some sort of slider where I vary the number of points, I could go back to putting these points all in a random location. That would be kind of interesting. Oh, let's do that now. Um, so where, where do I, oh, let's do this. Uh, let's just really quickly, I'm just curious to see. I gotta stop, you should, um, I shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing this. Right, so you can see, ah, okay, I don't know if that got it. So anyway, so that's, this is a clue to you of what you could now make, right, that I told you to share with me, right? You could uh, vary that percentage, vary the number of points, vary where the seed point starts, animate, oh, so many possibilities, okay? See you later, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> okay, let me put this back, however, to five and and back to point five, and there we go. And there we go. Um, uh, Xnick is asking, what if your percent gets larger than one? That's an interesting question. 
Okay, what time is it? 11.30. Um, Agario Part 3 says LOM. Probably not, but uh, I'm, I'm about ready to go. I have to just check something here. something. Um, just checking. Sorry, I like to look at my email. <laughs> um, okay. All right. Um, I don't see the demon faces. I'm gonna have to stare at this more later. Close these things out. So I wanted to also um, I wanted to let me sign in here. Um, oh, thank you to Oliver Harris, a new member of the coding train. Um, authentication code, uh, all right, um, I'm pretty sure now, I'm, so, all right, so you might recall that somewhat recently, um, I created the uh, quick, draw, uh, quick Draw Coding Challenge right here, where I, I used the Quick Draw data set, the uh, Google Quick Draw data set, to uh, replay drawings that people all around the world have made of various things like cats and rainbows and so on and so forth. So to do this, I downloaded very large data files full of JSON data of all of the drawing information. And then I spun up a little node server to pass individual drawings to a JavaScript web client. And so now, you know, timing wise, sort of ironically, as soon as I did that, almost like to the day, the uh, Google Rele Creative Lab released an API to it called a web component. So I wanted to explore this in kind of like a part two. The question is, do I need to sign up for an API key? Um, so, no, no, not quick draw data set. I'm already there. A quick draw component, sorry, this is what I'm looking for. So uh, I do need an API key, okay. So how do I get an API key? Uh, I don't want to do it with npm install. Join the QuickDraw API Google group. Oh, API services library. Okay, so let me. Okay, let's do this. Whoa, MoMA. This seems weird. Doesn't make any sense. I think that's a mistake on there. Is it like console.google.com or something? Yeah. Um, maybe it's here. APIs and services library quick draw. Quick. No. Hmm. Uh, does anybody know what I'm looking for here? Um, this is API slash library. This is so weird. 
No. Real quick draw API. This is a quick web demo. This is so weird. Why is it taking me to pantheon.corp? I mean, this does not feel like where I should be logging in. Has anybody discovered where do I really need to search? Is it, is, it, is it really as simple as reading the instructions? And actually, searching for th this more precisely? OK, let's try this. No. console.developers.google.com. Let's try that. That's where I want to, let's try this. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, Hmm. Cloud.google.com. Well, I might have to come back to this. The API is just not public yet. Oh. But it's right here. This is not a private. Well, maybe I'll use this API key. <laughs> oh, self-hosting, huh. Quick draw files, oh, app spot. Ooh, look at this. Like for example, like let's see this. Draw component.js. Oh, the README says to join the group, which says they'll give you access to the API. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come back. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna join that group and come back uh, next time and look at that API. <laughs> Thank you. Which is good because I kind of have to go anyway. I wanted to do this sort of ThinkerCon thing. Um, Google Creative Lab is, a, I don't know what, what count, uh, Chris is asking, is Google Creative Lab an official Google GitHub account? Oh, do I just have to literally join the group? Okay, let's do that. I just kind of would prefer to join it from, so let me get an API key uh, a, diff a slightly different way <coughs> for a second. Because I'd rather, um, actually, whoops. Or actually, you know what? This is fine. All right, let's. Uh, all right, let's, let's. Uh, um, So let's do this. 
Let's uh, join group. Um, okay. So you can now see and enable the Quick Draw API in your own project at Google Cloud. <laughs> really, this is so weird. Why is it still MoMA inside Google? Maybe that's really where I'm supposed to be going, but. There it is. Private, create, quick draw, coding train. Okay. What APIs do I have? I should probably actually show how to do this in the video. Enable, okay. Okay, can I delete this? Uh, library, no. Oh, Google. Oh, Google. Why? Why do you do this to me? How do I delete it? I don't want a new project. Delete. Ah. Okay. So, delete this. Oh, come on. Delete. Yes. Okay. Wait, I, I don't think anyone watching the video is going to be able to follow this. And then I should be able to do um, me. I am so me. If you're actually watching, I should be able to just do a. Once I have the API key, I should just be able to do, make a call to uh, quickdrawfiles.appspot.com um, uh, with, uh, with, with just a get request, right? To get just like the JSON back. Like what I want to do is just get the data. Like I want to draw it myself. Fetch image data, draw image, no. Oh yeah, like this, drawing API middleware. This is what I want to do. So category ID equals, or, or random, API key, format JSON. Okay, great. So this is, this is what I need, okay. All right. Okay, so now, and okay, 
Okay. <clears throat> All right, everybody. So give me a second here. Uh, remind me later. Okay, why not? Uh. Oops. <laughs> oh. I definitely need to go eat. <laughs> ah! How many new tabs can I open up? Go into Chrome! Okay. Where? I should probably not do this now. Oh boy. Oh. I just want to get this open. Um. Oh yeah. Here we go. I know the camera went out. Okay. Okay, everybody, I should definitely go eat lunch. But I said I was going to do this. So, oh, did, you, did you hear that? That was my stomach growling. I don't know if that came in through the microphone or not. <clears throat> I don't think I need the ThinkerCon shirt anymore. Um, I was wearing that for, so let me, this will work better for the microphone. Sorry, this is going to make some weird sounds for a second. Apologies for all the scratchy scratchy. Okay. All right. Aw, is that mean? Okay, well, the problem, if I go and have lunch, which I should do, I won't be coming back. <laughs> so I'm either doing this now or not. Probably should practice this first. Yeah. Okay, and here we go. All right, here we go. Hello, welcome to a follow-up coding challenge quick draw again thingy mabob quick draw API web component edition. <laughs> so uh, previously in a coding challenge, I downloaded a large data file from the Google quick draw data set. I talked about what the Google quick draw data set is. It's just a collection of millions and millions of these doodles that people made playing the Google quick draw game. Um, and I created a node server locally on my computer to open that very large data file and pass information about the drawings to a JavaScript program that would read that information and then replay the drawings in a canvas. Basically, almost to the day that I released that coding challenge, Google came out with something new 
called the Quick Draw component. And what the Quick Draw web component is, it allows you to actually, using markup and importing a JavaScript file, just actually embed Quick Draw um, doodles in a web page. I'm not going to do that in this video. What I'm going to do is actually show you how to use the API directly to pull the data from the drawing yourself so that you can draw it in a canvas. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do, just to be clear, I know that wasn't clear at all. I'm going to do exactly what I did in the previous coding challenge, but instead of downloading a very large data file and spinning up my own node server, I'm just going to ask the Google API itself for a drawing. And then I'm gonna go eat lunch. I should probably go eat lunch now. Maybe maybe like pizza is one or something. Actually, I'm not a big pizza eater, but I'll we'll pick some food themed drawing. And just to be sure that I, it's actually working to do it this way, I am going to do this in the P5 web editor so that I can be sure that you can be sure that I'm not like secretly downloading a big file running a node server somewhere. Why would I do that though? Captain Disillusion will come for me if I try to fake something on my channel. I was hoping that maybe something in post just got added there. I doubt it, like a rainbow. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so here's the thing. It's a bit confusing uh, because this is so new. This API is, is available. It's out there, but it's a bit confusing to use it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to um, this uh, GitHub repository, quickdraw-component. And then down here, somewhere in here, you're going to want to find this join the Quick Draw API Google group. Now, by the time you're watching this, this may have changed, <laughs> but I will hopefully keep the code up to date, but maybe the sign-up process will have changed. So as soon as you go to the Google Quick Draw API Google group, I joined, you'll end up this page, click join, you'll need some sort of Google account. Then you're gonna wanna go to your Google API dashboard. So here I am, I'm at console.developers.google.com slash API slash dashboard. There are a lot of APIs there that you could look at, and what I'm gonna do is now search for quick draw. And I made a project by accident, which I didn't mean to, um, but this is what I'm looking for. Quick draw exclamation point data API private. Now, this will not appear for you to you unless you join that Google group. <laughs> so that's a little bit of the confusing thing, at least at the time that I'm doing this today, November something 2018. It's like the 25th, 26th, something like that. All right, so I'm gonna click here to um, oh, and I need to make a project, so I'm going to call this project. So I want to first create a project. Just, yeah, try to click enable. I'm going to do this. Call this coding train uh, test. I'm going to hit create, and then I'm going to go back and search again for quick draw, quick comma draw, <laughs> and I'm going to grab this here. Uh, no, okay. Uh. It's so hard to use these API services. I'm gonna get this. Quick draw API. This is where I am? Select a project. Okay, no, I created a project. Oh, oh here we are. <laughs> Somehow I made it to the coding train test project. You wanna create a project and get to your coding train, or your, well, you're not gonna call it coding train, get to your project page. Now, I'm gonna find that API. It takes a minute for the project to, uh, to actually be created. I think I was going too quickly there. I'm gonna go to Quick Draw Data API. Aha, there we go. Now I'm on this page. Now I'm gonna click Enable. And I'm enabling the API. Okay, so now I have this API enabled. The next thing that I wanna do is go here under Credentials because I'm going to need an API key. So I'm gonna go here under Credentials. Ooh, create Credential. Uh, yeah, this looks good. Uh, what API are you using? That's what I'm using. Uh, what, uh, oh, here's my API key. Fantastic. So here's the thing. I am going to regenerate this API key as soon as I finish this video, so you won't be able to use it. You'll have to create your own. Um, and I'm going to copy it, copy it. And I'm going to very quickly just over here now in my code, I'm just gonna add it at the top as a comment so I always remember it. Okay, so here's the thing. I should mention that um, this, while you can do, you can use the API, I'm gonna do that right now, if you're gonna use this for a large project, you might wanna actually consider self-hosting the API, which is kind of what I did in the previous video, but actually using Google's um, code, which is probably much more robust and has a lot more possibilities. But once I have my API key, all I need to do, and I'm gonna scroll down here to uh, API middleware, I just need to go to this particular URL. So let's grab this URL. 
I am going to, I'm going to use the load JSON function in P5. I'm going to paste this in here. So now what I want to do is I want to say drawing category. I know that cat is a category. I'm going to say ID. So I could ask for a very specific drawing, but I think I can actually just say random to get a random one and then get my API key. And then, uh, and then I don't, is animated. I don't want it animated. And format equals, I want it JSON. Like I want to get that JSON. So let's see if I take this URL now. <laughs> not found. All right, what do we think I did wrong? Pause for a second here. Me, I am so me. How did you get your successful get request? He, looking over there, is animated. What if I don't give it an ID? Ah, okay. Oh, oh, look at that. Interesting. Okay, great. Oh, hello. I'm <laughs> All right, I'm back. So interestingly enough, even though the documentation says um, ID required, ID number or random, I thought this meant, means I can actually type random into the URL query string, but maybe not. <laughs> because now if I go back here and I just zoom in up here and get rid of ID equals random, just start with key, I can see, there we go. Each time I do this, I'm gonna get a random cat drawing uh, here in JSON. So look at this, uh, lovely. All right, so great, we're now using this API. So I can go back here, I can go back to my code, and um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a constant URL equals, so I'm just going to save this, and obviously I would want to do something more, I could do so much here by, I could actually form the URL with the particular category, but cat, meow, agori, um, but right now I am just going to keep that, and I'm going to, in setup, I'm going to say load JSON, URL, got cat, I'm gonna give it a callback, got cat. I'm gonna write this got cat function, um, drawing, and I'm just gonna say console.log drawing. So let's see that in P5, if I actually, and I'm gonna take, get rid of the draw function, if I've actually got, there we go, drawing. So this looks like, there it is. So you can see down here in the console, all that data came in. So all that data came in, so I've got the cat, and now, guess what? I can draw it. Okay, so uh, let's just make this 255, 255. So, oh, I wonder if this is the simplified data. So it actually probably isn't the simplified data, or maybe it is. Um, well, I'm going to be filing lots of GitHub issues. Time out for a second. Um, <laughs> I like that Solar Liner wrote, Dan is a dad confirmed. I know exactly what Solar Liner is referring to. <laughs> um, do we know, is this the simplified data? We'll return raw time-based data. Oh, otherwise simplified data. Good. Where was I? So looking back at the documentation, I just realized is animated, is animated, if I set that to true, I will get the data back that actually has the timing information related to how the user drew the drawing in down to the millisecond, but which in my previous coding challenge, I didn't bother to use. I just used the simplified data, which is just the X and Y values of the particular path that the user, um, that the user drew. <laughs> and uh, it also is reduced, normalized to uh, 255 by 255 pixel square. So I want to use the simplified data just to make my life easier, because as I mentioned, I need to go get something to eat. <laughs> is pizza one of the categories? It's the only food one that I could think of. Um, you know, I, I doubt that's like, um, you know, vegan quinoa bowl or something is one of the categories. Let's try pizza. 
Um, yeah, looks like pizza came in as something. So now what I'm going to do here is in got cat, which I'm now going to call got pizza. Uh, got pizza. What I'm going to do? I really I could just go to my previous code. Do I dare? Oh, I could. Re I should probably rewrite this code. It's lunchtime. You can go watch the other video. I'll link to the time in the video where I actually write this portion. Right now I'm going to go to uh, github.com slash coding train website. Um, and I'm going to go to coding challenges all the way down to quick coding challenge 122, quick draw, sketch.js. And this is the code right here where I in draw, where I draw that particular pattern. So I'm going to grab that. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, yeah, let's, oh, look at this. Basically, actually, here's the thing. This whole thing, uh, there's no reason for me to rewrite this. I, just to prove that this works, this is the entire code. And I am going to go back to my code. I'm going to paste my entire thing in here. The only thing I'm going to change is instead of my own node server slash cat, I am going to go to the particular URL. Now there might be some slight differences here, but let's see what happens. <laughs> I don't see a cat. Ooh. Let's try that again. Uh, blocked by cores. I didn't have the cores problem before. Hmm. Also, that cores error should have come up in the Oh. Guess what, everybody? Oops, what, no, hold on. Guess what, everybody? So before I had made, uh, it actually was the, the error that, <clears throat> yes, reload the site. Hold on. So Mathieu, when we edit this, like I don't need to go and find that cores thing because that was a red herring. I don't know why I got that error, but this is the problem. Oh, guess what? I found the problem. Um, when I made my own node server, I sent the data back for the drawing in a drawing property of the data. Boy, that was a terrible way to explain it. I wrote my own node server, so I had the, the actual data for the sketch, the drawing, the doodle, embedded inside of the data coming back dot drawing. But that's not the case with the Google API. The cat, or the pizza, is just the data itself. So if I now do this, and now hit run, come on, pizza. Good, that's a very long timpani effect. Oh, wait. Oh, it just didn't work for the first one. Why is that? It needs like a minute. So weird. What is going on?
I'm getting it sometimes and not other times. So weird. I'm getting the cores error. Look, I'm getting it in various places, I think. I think this is a weird P5 web. Google API is also dot drawing, seriously? So that wasn't the problem? Oh, it is dot drawing. Oh, I'm just a lunatic. All right, that, that, never mind, Matya. It is the cores issue. But it, like, I got it in my, No, I, I refreshed the page. Okay, hold on a sec. Let me get rid of the auto refresh. Oh, do you think it like I think this is, there's some weird stuff with the web editor, which is really unfortunate. Um, um, oops. Oh no. Huh. All right, all right, that's promising. It's not the web editor. Um. Oh, I'm over my API limits. <laughs> oh, that's the problem. <laughs> okay. Probably because I was requesting it so often. All right, fine. Oh. No, oh, oh it's, it's, hold on. Where, where, oh, where is my console? There we go, okay. Can I? Do you think somebody used my key crazily? Yeah, somehow, I think I've been foiled by somebody watching me. Because there's no way I made 17,899, yeah, look at this, watch. Here's the problem, yeah. <laughs> this is the problem. All right, I'm gonna have to 
kill my key, regenerate something, and not make it public while I'm live streaming. Why, why can't, we can't, this is why we can't have nice things, people. I might actually just have to leave and come back and do this another time, unfortunately. Or actually, uh, me, I am so me. Could I perhaps use your key? <laughs> I promise. Can I use your key? Can you generate me a key? Um, and what I'll do is I'll put it in the code uh, without... Um, I mean, maybe I can just generate my own new key. I could have also like locked it to my IP address or something, but um, Okay, thank you. So I'm getting a new key, um, and I will make my screen invisible when I get it. Okay, I've got the key. Let me just get, put it in a way that I can transfer it really quickly. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I have to like two factor again. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Um, don't worry everybody, this will be ready in a second. Yeah, I'll make a new sketch too. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I, 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 I've, I've got a way around this. I will. Secret. Okay. Uh, create secret gist. Okay, all right. Screen going away. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting that key. Uh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm getting this key. Getting messages here. Uh, I am going to... Um, I am going to put the key in the code. You won't be able to see that. Um, and then what I'm going to do, ooh, shoot, ah! <laughs> Hold on everybody, hopefully I didn't mess up. Shoot, I might have messed up. I won't say what I did that I might have messed up though. Uh, uh, hide address bar. How do I hide the address bar? In Chrome. How do I hide the address bar in Chrome? Mm -hmm. um, let me get back here.
How do I hide the address bar in Chrome? F11. Nope. That didn't work. <laughs> That's probably like a PC thing. Uh, let me make sure this actually works. I don't want to go into full screen because Oh, whoops. Sorry, as soon as I get this to work. Then I will come back live. There we go. Okay, so I have it working. Um, oh, that's... All I need to do is hide the address bar. There's got to be... A, go to About Flags and the Compact... Flags, compact, address, address box, um, Um, settings, compact theme, address, seriously won't, I can't hide the address bar? I have an idea actually. All right, fine. All right, I'm not going, I'm just going to delete the URL from the address bar. Use tape to hide it. Okay? This is a working version. I deleted the URL from the address bar. You cannot know where this, oh, you know, there's, oh my goodness, there's an easy way to find, boy, there's a way to find this. Ah! <sighs> You know what, deleting the address bar is, is no good because, uh, uh, but <clears throat> anyway, I just kind of move on and finish this before somebody gets it because it's way too easy to get it. Okay. I just realized, okay, okay. I'm back. Actually, so the problem that I was having was not a cores error or some other error. There was no error. The problem was the people of the internet. That's why we can't have nice things. Somebody used my, uh, took my um, API key and started using it and I exceeded my quota. So I have a new API key and I'm going to, ooh, you can't. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Just run it quickly. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> right, so let's see if we can do it quickly. 
hi, I'm back and I'm moving very quickly because the reason it wasn't working wasn't my code, wasn't some mistake I made, wasn't the dreaded cores error. It was that I exceeded my quota. Now, how could I possibly have exceeded my quota? Because I certainly did not make <laughs> something like 19,000 API requests in the last few minutes. And in fact, somebody watching this, this is why we can't have nice things, people. Um, must have taken the API key. So I have a different API key, and because I talked for too long, it probably also just got used. But let's hope uh, it's here in this sketch. I'm gonna run it. Four twenty nine error. <laughs> so let me at least show you what the error is. Uh, I thought this was a cores error but it's actually the server responded with the error 429, and 429 is uh, an issue with the key. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna conquer this. I'm going away, I'm gonna generate a new key, and then I'm going to immediately run it for the first time live before anybody can possibly get it. <sighs> okay. Can I, the question is, can I generate a new key myself that's valid? Okay, I know how to do this. Goodbye, screen. This is so sad. I'm not gonna be able to have lunch because of this. I just want you to know whoever you are on the internet. This is definitely one that I should not have done live, I guess. Um, No, this is the old key. Whatever you saw was the old key. So whatever you saw was the old key. Um, okay, hold on. I am going to sign up. At mention me in Slack if somebody has a key faster than I can make another one for myself. So Wacka, no one managed to copy the key from the screen, but there's a way to pull up the sketch that I'm writing in the web editor. If I was not using the web editor, nobody would be able to get the key. I should just not use the web editor. You know what? I'm just going to not use the web editor next time. Um, but let me just get another key. Join group. I'm joining from my real Google account. Um, and then uh, console.developers.google.com. Password feels best plan. <laughs> I know, okay. That just seems like all this extra programming. Guess I should do that. Um, Gonna go here and uh, moderate the chat also while I'm here. Um, okay. Uh, oops. I'm determined to do this quick. Sorry, me, I am some me. Uh, creating a credential. Okay, I have another API key. We have another API key. Thinking here. 
I'm going to get my API key. Okay, I have my new API key. Let's make sure this actually works. Okay, I'm getting drawings now. Oh, it's going to auto save. Shoot. <laughs> You're right about the password field. Two lines of code. What's two lines of code, the password field? That feels like a lot more than. Okay, I'm going to do it. Okay. I am going to. Okay. All right, don't worry, this is not the actual key. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this at the end and key equals, then um, I am going to here. How am I doing this? I'm creating like a uh, create input. How do I make something a password field? Um, How do I uh, password field? Password input field. How do I do that in HTML? Input type equals password. Okay. Um, type password. No. Type password. Oh, oh, I have to. Yes, okay. Okay. All right, great. Okay, and then. Plus API key. Key. Key input, let's call this key input, key input equals API key. Um, sorry, I'm thinking I really need to go eat a uh, key. No, API key. All right. All right, I'm going to do this as part of the coding challenge, even though it's irrelevant. But you've... Ooh, hint equals API key. I like that. All right. Oh! <laughs> All right, I'm just going to move quickly. All right. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to conquer you, Internet. What I'm going to do here, thank you to me, I am so me for this suggestion. All right, I'm going to conquer you, internet. Thank you to me, I am so me for the suggestion. What I'm going to do, I already started doing this. I'm going to create an input field, key input. I'm going to say key input equals, equals create input uh, with nothing in it. So, oh, let me do, I'll put on auto refresh here. Oh, and let me uncomment un this out. Okay, so now, 
we should see there's this input field, right? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say key input dot attribute. This is all the P5 DOM library. Uh, type is a password. So what this means is anything that I type in here, you can't see. And then when I call new cat, I'm actually going to say, I'm going to get the API key is key input dot value. So I'm going to get the input from the value. <laughs> My brain is not speaking anymore. I'm going to, yes, I'm going to get the API key from there. And then I'm going to, with what I did to this URL, is I just left it with key equals blank at the end. So now I am going to say plus API key. So if the API key is in here, if the API key is in here, then what will happen is it will pull it from there. You won't be able to see it. It will pass it to the, you won't need to do this. You don't need to be crazy. I'm just here trying to defeat the internet. And unfortunately, I might have made a mistake, but hold on. So I'm going to get rid of this screen behind me. I'm going to go get my API key. I'm going to put it in my clipboard. I'm going to put this back. And I'm going to paste it in. Syntax error, syntax error. What's going on? Oh, I'm not calling new cat. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I had new cat commented out because I was so worried. Mm, hold on, hold on. I guess the sequence doesn't matter here. Play. No. What is going on? Uh, wait, why do I have this error now? Oh my God, is it really 1240? This is, this is what always happens to me. Cannot read property value of undefined sketch line 19. What? What? What is going on? Oh, oh! <laughs> okay, I didn't have Okay, new cat was commented out. So I need to actually call new cat. I also need to call new cat after I create that input field. Okay. I'm going to defeat the internet here. Here we go. All right, the input field is there. I now will make this go away. I am now quickly going to get my API key. Coming back here. This is coming back. I'm pasting it in here. <laughs> 401, that's good. My sequence is off. I guess I should make a button. Let's Let's make a button. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun for Mathieu. <gasps> All right, new cat is commented out. That was a problem. I think what I want to also do is create a button. Uh, like start. Uh, and then I'm going to say start start equals create button, start equals create button, start, and then we'll say start mouse pressed, new cat. So now, okay, now I should, the sequence should be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win, I mean, look at the work. I'm gonna paste my API key in there, then I'm gonna click the start button, then I should start seeing my cats. And they won't be cats, they'll be pizza, because I'm going to go eat lunch, but probably just a salad. Okay. <laughs> Here it comes again. <gasps> Disappear. Captain Disappear Illusion. <laughs> Wrong key. <laughs> Quick, get my API key. Then paste this in here. You can see it again. Now I'm going to hit start. Thank you very much. I can get another pizza. There we go. Every time I press start, we'll get a pizza. I win. Internet. So you won't have to go. <laughs> I'm so defeated. Nobody, nobody won here. Basically, we all lost. Um, so anyway, you can see now, I, well, there was a point to this. Oh, the whole point to this was that the exact same code I wrote in the previous coding challenge, I can now run from anywhere by using the official QuickDraw API from Google. I might have to just come back and do this video again, but it, it's going to exist in some form because this was all too insane. Um, so, um, yeah. So, goodbye, everybody. I am going to take this away so that nobody sees my key by accident and I will see you in a future Cody challenge. <laughs> All right, I gotta go everybody. That's it. I don't know if I'm even coming back on Friday now. I should be back on Friday. I will be doing something on Friday. Um, I, I, I would take questions and stuff, but it is 12.45. I'm probably like unbelievably late for something. Um, let me just check the calendar here to make sure. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm okay. I have a little bit of time, but I really have to go. So, um, Um, so anyway, maybe, well, so, so yeah, so thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. This has been The Coding Train, uh, and I will just say, to, I will take you out with thank you to Espen Larson's Now I have to sit here and press this button to stop streaming.